let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. Dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God. You have done great things. You've been a faithful through storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. You have done great things. I know you'll do it again. Amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Free every captive and break every chain. No, oh, God, you have done great things. Dance in your motion, awake and alive. Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. I'm Pastor Carl, and no matter whom you are on life's journey, we thank you so much for being here with us this day. We thank those who are viewing us this day as well through their electronic devices of some sort. We thank you, and we just pray that you will continue to have your hearts open to hear all that God will have for you to hear, because our God loves you so much. Yes, sir. My vacation, my vacation was well. I was with this beautiful girl here, and she had me doing stuff. Do this, honey. Do that, honey. Do this, honey. Do that, honey. So, so, <laughs> so for, for the most part, um, um, my vacation was good because I had a chance to spend time with her. So thank you so much for asking. I appreciate that. I'm going to give you a quarter after the service. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to continue now with um, our hymn, The Battle Belongs to the Lord, hymn number 511. Hey, Jessica and the musicians, thank you guys also. The battle belongs to the Lord. 
Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory. Oh, please sit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I want to say also that I missed you all as well. Though I was with my wife, you guys were in fact missed, so I want to let you know that as well. And also, many thanks for those who participated yesterday in terms of setting up the tents and things for the vacation Bible school that will occur this week coming up here. Um, I also will tell you that if you have family and friends and loved ones of children, please and have them to get in contact with us so that they can, in fact, enjoy the festivities that um, Kiris and Vargo and her great team of people are working to put forth for the children that are coming up this week for the Vacation Bible School. Okay, um, I'm going to have a point of joys and concerns, and guess what? I guess everybody is happy and healed and whole because I don't have any joys or concerns today. <laughs> so I will say that we're doing good, the grace of the Lord here, and that um, we are going to keep, move, keep moving forward here. And then once God gives people a comfort in their hearts, they will, in fact, start coming back to church as well. Um, but I just know that some people are challenged in light of all that's going on, and we have to respect that. And um, so I'm encouraged knowing that God is still with us despite the things that we're going through in life. Amen. Okay, so I'll pause right now for a moment of personal and private reflection, then I will say a corporate prayer for us all. Our God, we thank you. We thank you that your love for us is immeasurable. We thank you, our God, that you look over us, watch over us, and keep us in ways that we don't even understand. Your word declares that you give your angels charge over us to protect us, even when we don't know that we're being protected. This is how much you love us. So our God, this day we lift up our hearts to you we lift up our joys to you. We lift our concerns to you. We lift them up, Lord, in the purity of holiness, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to see those things which we need, things that we have desires of, Lord, and help us, Lord, to filter our desires and our wants through you. So we praise you, our God, and we thank you, and we pray even as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How's everybody doing this sunshiny day, Sunday here? Everybody's good? Uh, I just wanted to remind uh, all um, our church members uh, and those who just want to join in, uh, we do have a council meeting this afternoon. Uh, it'll be filled with uh, lots of joys and happiness and uh, new beginnings for us or uh, restatements, I guess, so to speak. Um, you all know I, I get up on Sundays here to um, uh, speak about during the offering time. And we just want everyone to know that the offering baskets are in the back of the church as you exit. Uh, the two brown uh, baskets there, uh, you can just drop it in in the narthex. And we want everybody to know that we appreciate uh, all of your financial support for our church. Um, and uh, it helps our church's wider mission. It helps our steeple. It helps our... Uh, VBS, it helps just everything about our church, uh, and that's what we're, we're about, everything that comes in and uh, goes back out. And I also want to say, um, I'm very impressed, Chris came up and did the this moment last week, he did a very good job, don't you think, I think? Yes? A very good job. Good job. Um, so, and we also encourage 100% participation. Uh, I always like, always like to leave, you, leave a scripture, um, and it also seems to be paying off. I don't know if you guys get the emails, but we are doing well uh, at this point in time in the year um, for, our, for our pledges. So thank everybody for their responses because uh, it only benefits uh, our church and our community here. Um, the scripture I'd like to uh, use uh, for this week, uh, it's, it's a scripture, uh, Proverbs, the 11th chapter, and the... 24th verse. Um, in 1 Kings, uh, the 4th chapter and 32nd verse, it states that Solomon had th over 3,000 um, proverbs and uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,500 songs. So it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know that I've written one yet, but uh, that's it's a pretty good average there. Um, so Solomon, this is uh, the Proverbs of Solomon. Um, and I'd just like to, to read it here. Uh, I'll have two scriptures. Proverbs 11, chapter 24, verse. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. So water, it's referring to casting out upon, upon you know, your water or out your earnings, your gifts out to other people. And it always comes back to you. Uh, and just another scripture, the Proverbs, the 13th chapter and the seventh verse, there is one who makes himself rich yet has nothing. So if you hold on to it, you'll have less. And one who makes himself poor yet has great riches. So your hands should not be like this it should be like this, open, okay? Um, and just one last uh, story I heard recently. There was a gentleman in California, and it was near one of the Bay Areas, and he was a homeless guy, uh, but he was very creative. He had, he painted a bullseye on his, his body, a bullseye, like a target bullseye sort of thing, and he had a sign that said, I bet you can't hit me with a quarter. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty creative, and uh, that's how he, he made his, his way. Thank you. Have a great day. Please turn your hymnals to number 50, Great is the Lord. <laughs>
Scripture reading will be coming from Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 9 through 64, verse 4. In all their distress, it was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he became their enemy. He himself fought against them. Then they remembered the days of old of Moses, his servant. Where is the one who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is the one who put within them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to march at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. Thus you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your holy and glorious habitation. Where are your zeal and your might, the yearning of your heart and your compassion? They are withheld from me. For you are, you are our father, though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, from, <clears throat> from old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our heart so that we do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that are your heritage. Your holy people took possession for a little while, but now our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have long been like those whom you do not rule, like those not called by your name. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, babe. Our God, we thank you for the hearing of your word, that your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts. Therein, allow your word to grow within us 30, 60, and 100 fold. These things we ask in the name of King Yeshua Jesus. Amen. The sermon titled this day is Wait, Isaiah 63, 9 through 64 and 4. Um, before I continue, I also want to give Mr. Lewis and Mr. Vargo a great word of encouragement for all they did last week as well. It was beautiful. I saw the service and I saw what you both did and I'm so thankful, both of you, thank you so much. 
It means a lot to me. It means a lot to our church as well. Amen. Okay, now it's time to get down. <laughs> In Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss, he states, The waiting place for people just waiting. Waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or no. See, our whole lives are spent one way or another waiting. We're left on hold waiting for information. We wait for orders placed that have yet to come. Wait for our loved ones to get dressed. <laughs> we, we wait for the snow to melt. We wait for rain to stop, and we wait for paint to dry. <laughs> Will we ever understand why we have to wait? Will it ever change, right? It seems that there's a series in life that occurs in waiting in terms of hope and have fulfillments. So we shall learn to wait with grace, with increased patience, and understanding that this is a human condition because it is so close to our lived existence. We wait not because we want to wait, but we realize that soon enough there is nothing that we can do other than to wait. All of us have been called to spend more time unfortunately, in waiting. So the children of Israel had to wait as slaves under the bondage of the Egyptians for an impossibly length of time. They were longing to be set free from Pharaoh and his taskmasters, but here's the lesson that they didn't understand that they were eventually come to understand, that their waiting would have meant nothing in the deliverance had they not learned to endure during the period of waiting. Consider the fact as we fast forward to Moses leading the children of Israel out of bondage and to the place where God had called them. Instead of going directly from Egypt into the promised land, they had to take a detour around Sinai for 40 years more awaiting in the wilderness, waiting so they could be hammered into a nation that would be able to be strong, to be hardy enough, to be hungry enough to overtake the land where God would eventually bring them to. Now, I'll cover this topic in another sermon coming up. You'll want to hear it. So from our reading today, we see that the children of Israel were now forced to wait again as captives in Babylon, longing for the God of Sinai to once again appear before them to open up the heavens to deliver them from their oppression. In Isaiah, the 64th chapter, you will read it when you do you'll see that they demanded God's presence to intervene for them once again in history. They acknowledged three times their failures and the consequences of their actions that caused them to be in a place of bondage, waiting to be delivered. They confessed their unclean conditions and that their garments was as filthy rags before our God and that they would fade away as drying leaves. They realized that all of their strength was in God's hand and they only could wait for God to deliver them from the things that they were in fact going through. I will encourage everyone to read chapter 63 and chapter 64 of the book of Isaiah. 
See, only a few Christians believe that they too must wait for God. Yet we wait and we must wait even as the children of Israel waited. So unfortunately must we wait. As a side note, and I will give you a peek into what I'm going to be talking about going into the future, is the fact that waiting is a time of preparing us, preparing us for something that God wants to do. And I'll leave it at that for right now. So our culture is not designed to wait. We don't want to wait. We are forevermore being pushed and to doing things faster, to doing things quicker, to doing things with the advancement of technology. These are the things that are around us today. So our culture does not want us to wait. For instance, from the time that Christ died until 1990, not, excuse me, to 19, for the year 1900, the fund of available information for people has only doubled one time. From 1900 to 1950, it doubled twice. From 1960 to 1990, knowledge increased every two years. From 1990 to the year 2000, it doubled every six months. From the year 2000 to now, I don't know how fast knowledge is increasing. With the internet, email, blogging, streaming, 5G networks, cloud, social networks, social media, smartphones, smart TVs. I honestly don't know how fast knowledge is increasing these days. But there's one thing I want us to understand here. There is something that God was trying to tell us that there is a danger that would occur with all of this knowledge increasing as such. We read, but you, Daniel, kept the words secret and the book sealed until the times of the end. Many shall be running back and forth, and evil shall increase, Daniel 12 and 4. What is not readily understood is that the Hebrew word evil is da'af in the Hebrew, and many Bible translations translate it as such. But it means something different, I want to tell you. It means that God was trying to say that when this occurs, something would happen, and he's saying here, when you get the Hebrew word here, it means that knowledge shall increase. But you, Daniel, have kept the words of secret and sealed in the times of the end. Many shall come running back and forth, and knowledge shall increase. So God is trying to tell us that as knowledge increase, that each bombardment of knowledge, something happens within the human soul. Something happens to humankind here that potentially produces behaviors that result in ungodly results, which God declares as evil. Now, I'm not saying that all knowledge is evil, but I'm saying something happens that God is trying to tell us that occurs with the increase of knowledge. See, our culture is insati with its insatiable appetite for knowledge has made us impatient and insensitive. The process of wait and incubating time is not part of our lifestyle. We are now and ever more increasingly trying to move faster and faster and faster. See, whatever technology has done to our culture, it has not changed the way that God interacts with his people. For God still tells us, be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46 and 10. See, to wait is to be still, to be sober, and to make ourselves quiet before our God so we can receive the truth, the truth that God has for us, which we have been conditionally through our culture not wanting to be able to receive. Our cultures does not lend itself for us to engage God this way. See, while we're waiting for God, it is a time for us to get quiet before our God and to become receptive 
to wanting to hear from God like a child wanting their parent to read to them a bedtime story. When we wait on God, it changes our eyes and our understanding so we can see differently. In waiting, Israel saw and thought that Babylon was the problem from our reading today. But during their waiting, they saw that they were the problem and that Babylon was only the holding place that God held them in until they were ready to trust God so God could deliver them from what they were going through. Waiting on God changes our hearts and confirms that there is nothing that we can do until God gets ready to do it. Waiting means that we must understand that the initiative for change can start with us but only ends when God moves to change the situation. Waiting confirms that God loves us enough to have us to know that he can make all things new as we wait and trust God in the waiting of what we're going through. Listen, what we wait for determines how we wait. It determines how we live life in the moment. While we wait, we live towards imagining what it can only be a better day. This is why scripture states, from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. Isaiah 64 and 4. Hear me. Waiting is God's attempt to reach us, to let us know when we are off track. It is designed for us to understand that something is wrong in our midst, especially when we as individuals are powerless to change the situation on our own. So it is in waiting, if we are smart, that we will learn the lessons that God is attempting to teach us, to help us to understand, so we can understand what God would have us to do, how God wants to deliver us from what we're going through, so we can be what God will have us to be. Waiting, though painful, is designed to get a people a congregation on track to do and be what God would have for it to be. This is what we will continue to explore in the weeks ahead. Wait, the purpose of waiting, and how God can mold us to be the people that he will have us to be in the midst of our waiting. Grace and peace. Amen. Number 494, step by step.
May you walk in the presence of our God, that our hearts will be full of expectation, knowing that God loves us so. As we leave this place, but not God's presence, let us walk boldly before our God, trusting our God, knowing that our God loves us and that God will continue to keep us and watch over us. May your week be a blessed week. May God's continual blessings be upon us all. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Peace. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm in the cross, my fears and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears and stilled, what striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. took on flesh fullest of God and helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he seemed to save till on the cross where Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid death of Christ I live. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullest of God and helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross Jesus died. For every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ.